Well, since you are a part of the crypto community, you know that Gary Gensler is public enemy number one. When Gensler became the chairman of the SEC, everyone was thrilled to finally have a regulator who understood blockchain technology. But in the time that he has been in office, things have gotten pretty testy. Top industry lawyers have slammed the stormy relationship Gary Gensler has had with the industry that at one time saw him as a potential ally. But since Gary became a part of the SEC, the industry considers him a serious nemesis and critics portray him as a tyrant for aggressively over-regulating crypto. Um, the other person that's going to, I think, I guess it's, it's fair to say, <laughs> you know, be in the crosshairs if the Republicans get uh, Congress, particularly if they get the Senate too, is Gary Gensler, the SEC chief. Uh, tomorrow is going to be a hearing before this, uh, the Senate, Finance, uh, Senate, Senate Banking Committee. As you know, the Democrats control the committee right now. Uh, Republicans on the committee are telling us, and particularly Ellie Terrett, my producer, uh, that this is a dry run if they get they get a majority and they put, and they um, and they control that committee. Gary Gensler is going to be public enemy number one. For why is that? Um, they just despise his agenda at the SEC. They believe he's overregulating crypto. Crypto is a huge folly in sort of conservative libertarian sort of. What has he uses. actually done that yet? Uh, oh yeah, he's expand. He's basically using, as they would say, regulation by enforcement. Uh, going after crypto companies, going after certain securities like XRP, and essentially taking what used to be the province and the regulatory sort of agenda of the CFTC, providing a heavy, more heavy hand to crypto, which they think is stifling growth. The other thing, of the stifling innovation of the whole, the whole business, the other thing I think they're going to really go after on is ESG stuff. Um, you know, his whole agenda of forcing companies to disclose all these sort of woke things, as they would say, environmental, like, environmental right. stuff, you know, board diversity, stuff that kind of veers away from what tr traditionally shareholders wanted and needed. They're going to go after that as well. So uh, we'll see some of that tomorrow. I think, you know, look at Pat Toomey. Pat Toomey, I know he's leaving the Senate, right. but, you know, he's kind of going to lead the charge here from what I understand. So see what they do tomorrow. And it, that will give you an insight if the Republicans get the, the majority and they control the Senate Banking Committee, which is essentially the, the main oversight committee for the Securities Exchange Commission. Right? I think Gensler's gonna, his rear end's gonna be on a seat <laughs> a lot. And, and I swear. Um, all right, Charlie, thank you very much. As always, welcome back to Moneyside, your favorite crypto news channel. If you're new here, welcome to the XRP Army. Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. That way you don't miss out on our daily crypto news updates. With that out of the way, we have a pretty interesting tweet from Leerzeit to talks about they are two important things that we all need to know about the history of the SEC in the last financial crisis. He states that Madoff was supposed to become the SEC chairman, but after that whole scandal blew up, the SEC accidentally destroyed all the records to protect mainstream investors, of course. In fact, Bernie Madoff was not only on several advisory committees at the SEC, but also, according to the SEC Inspector General's Investigation Summary Report, Madoff was on the short list to be the next SEC chairman. Remember that time that Bernie Madoff ran the largest Ponzi scheme in history for years right under the SEC's nose while they were warned? And honored by colleagues as the man who went to the Securities and Exchange Commission and blew the whistle on Bernie Madoff and his $50 billion fraud. How many times did you send material to the SEC? May 2000, October 2001, October, November, and December 2005, then again June 2007, and finally April 2008. Mm -hmm. So five separate SEC submissions. But something did happen. Corruption. They were meeting, remember this, they were meeting with their previous clients while at the SEC clients with very strong interests in outcomes that they ruled over in their government posts. Hinman even continued to earn 15 million from his previous law firm the whole three years he was at the SEC. You're either a horrible lawyer who can't see the conflict of interest or you don't care. As from tomorrow, we will know where the Congress stands in the matter of who gets to regulate cryptocurrencies. Gary Gensler hearing in Congress is happening, and we will know who in Congress is there to protect incumbent monopolies 
or wants to level the playing field. This is the opportunity for the Congress people to show the world that corruption in the United States is over. The whole world is watching to see how the leap will turn. And this is not even about crypto regulation. It's about who America is as a country. So RippleNet is trying to take on SWIFT. What's been the traction like? Who's come on board? Well, it, it's interesting as you step back and look at this. If you and I decided we we're going to send $10,000 to California today, the fastest way for us to do it would be to drive to the airport and fly it there. That's a crazy thing to think about when you're in the age of the Internet and you know, we're used to information on demand. When we think about the, the customers that have come on board, it's because we're solving that real problem. We're changing the nature of a payment taking days to settle to California to seconds. So we now have well over 100 customers ranging from some of the biggest banks in the world to payment providers to the Western Unions and MoneyGrams, Linlin Pay out of China. It's How many how, banks? It's, it's over 100. I actually don't know the exact number now. Uh, we Last time we announced it publicly, we said over 100. Uh, we'll probably announce the next one when we get to over 200. We're signing up more than a bank a week now. You mentioned Jamie Dimon, so let's bring it back to Jamie and J.P. Morgan. What do you think is going to be the, the thing that they will have to change the most or lose market share and somebody else is going to do better, faster, uh, you know, serve their clients better than J.P. Morgan or Goldman Sachs? You can, you can just hear the bankers panicking right now. When we talk about Jamie Dimon, we first have to recognize where he sits. Uh, he sits at the top of the global financial infrastructure central monopolist with another central monopolist a lot of commercial banks aren't terribly excited about that maybe you're going to have to give some ownership maybe you'll have to give 50 percent of your ownership to the 20 banks that are now you know part of this i mean there are other ways to build incentives maybe you put a native token in there and you give you give you know them the native token you know so there may be other incentive ways to beat the current monopolist there are a few banks, of which JPM is certainly one, that make billions and billions of dollars of profit by virtue of that perch. You know, 99.9% .9 of banks don't make money in this ecosystem in terms of cross-border payments. Jamie Dimon makes a technical term of a shit ton of money by sitting there. <laughs> Uh, just listening to Gensler, the current SEC chairman of the U.S., is literally explaining to students at MIT that it's okay for a monopoly to expect some kind of payment from a startup to be able to grow their business in the USA. L let that sink in. In other words, he's just trying to say that you have to pay the big guy for you to make it in the industry. And this is part of the reason why we've been seeing so much static with Ripple. That's mostly because Brad Garlinghouse is tampering with the big player's money. And since Gary Gensler is being held by the balls by the central monopolists, he keeps going and going with the Ripple selling securities narrative. This just shows how corrupt that the SEC appears and that the power that controls its actions. The SEC took an oath to protect the retail investors, but what are they doing instead? As always, do your own research and always trade safely, guys. Please keep in mind we're not a licensed financial advisor. All videos on this channel are intended for entertainment purposes only. You can always let us know what you think in the comments section below and let's have a conversation. Thank you so very much for watching. Don't forget to like this video and please click on that subscribe button below and turn on notifications so you get informed whenever we post our amazing content. We'll look forward to seeing you on the next Money Side.